Yeah, and this week, the students from RCB are showcasing the life and work of Dr. K.S. Krishnan. And the students from RCB are Dalchand, Ankit Biswas, Sushanta Majumdar, and Shweta Agarwal. So post the presentation, we will have a virtual tour of RCB, followed by which you will be given an option to ask the questions for which we have Dr. Prem, who is assistant professor at RCB. So you're welcome to ask any questions regarding RCB program from him, post these videos. And now without further ado, let's ask the team to start the presentation. Thank you. Why does the sea look blue? Is the color of water blue? If so, why not the water in ponds and wells look blue? Answer to this question brought the first and to date the only Nobel Prize in Science to India. The honor of Nobel Laureate was given to Dr. C. V. Raman, though there was one more major contributing hero behind this. The unsung hero in this story was Dr. K. S. Krishnan. He was a great physicist, real teacher, staunch nationalist and integrated personality. He has played an important role in development of science and technology in India. He was deeply associated with many educational organizations in the country like Atomic Energy Commission, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research and University Grant Commission. His gentle behavior and complete personality were also appreciated by India's first Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in his court. What is remarkable about Krishnan is not that he is a great scientist but something much more. He is a perfect citizen, a whole man with an integrated personality. Karyamanikam Srinivasa Krishnan was born on 4th December 1898 in the village of Watra in Tirunavali district of Tamil Nadu, which is presently a part of Madras Presidency. Dr. K. S. Krishnan belonged to a highly religious and scholastic family. His father, Srinivasa Ayagnar was a former scholar and used to teach in a school, while his mother Nachayar Ammal was a homemaker and has to take the duty of bringing up their family after the early demise of Krishna's father. He has completed his early schooling from his village and later joined Hindu high school in the neighboring town of Siriviliputra. He was highly influenced by his teacher Tirumalai Pillai and Eshubramanya Ayyagnar as they used to explain scientific principles using experimental demonstration in native and simple language. About his teacher Eshubramanya Ayyagnar, Krishnan once quoted, even though my teacher was not a professional scientist, he was a good at explaining science in a clear and capitative fashion. His lessons not only sunk deep into our mind but also made us crave for more science. I feel fortunate to have had him as my first science teacher. He developed a keen interest in science from his school time. In 1912, during his 11th standard, he recognized his deep passion for science for the first time when his science teacher asked him to write an essay on an instrument that can measure the density of solids. He unknowingly described the principle behind the well-known Nicholas hygrometer. He scored the highest marks in the matriculate examinations. After schooling, he moved to Madurai and took admission to American College Madurai in first art class. In 1916, he had joined Christian College Madras and continued his study in physics, chemistry and mathematics. 
He performed extraordinarily in physics and was awarded the annual Abidjan Prize by the university, but could not formally get the BA degree due to low marks in English. Later, by the efforts of his physics teacher, Rev. Alexander Moffat, he again joined Madras Christian College in August 1918 as a demonstrator in chemistry. Here, Krishnan started an informal lunch hour session on the topics of physics, chemistry and mathematics. A large number of people from his college and neighborhood come to attend these sessions. Even one of the attendee later remarked, I have learned more physics from this session than regular classroom lectures. Krishnan regularly went to Konemera Public Library and read about C.B. Raman and his scientific work. In 1920, due to Raman's insistence, Krishnan had to learn advanced areas of physics at Calcutta University. In 1923, Krishnan finally joined Raman's laboratory, Krishnan's most exciting and outstanding contribution to science was while working with Dr. C. V. Raman. Raman was enthusiastic about the bluish color of the sea. Sunlight is white light that is composed of different colors. When sunlight hits atmospheric particles, blue light scatters most. So many thoughts that sea color is due to the reflection of the blue color. But Raman thought differently as other water sources like pond water don't look blue. Krishnan was also part of this group. This landmark paper by C. V. Raman marks the beginning of the discovery of Raman scattering. In 1924, C. B. Raman attended a meeting on the Compton effect in X-ray scattering. He was against the interpretation made by Compton based on quantum mechanics. Raman has other ideas and a view that this can be explained by the wave theory of light. During Raman's absence, Krishnan performed a series of experimental studies of light scattering on a large number of liquids. During this period, Krishnan was also involved in different aspects of physics, including the polarization of various gaseous molecules and vapor which was published in Nature. Their other notable work from this period was published in various journals like Proceeding of the Royal Society and Nature that mostly focuses on the electromagnetism of several liquids. In 1926, Compton won the Nobel Prize for the Compton effect, which triggered Raman to shift their focus on light scattering. In the year 1928, Krishnan confirmed that the modified scattered beam of sunlight is of intense green in addition to blue. Raman wanted to have more solid evidence as he had doubted they weren't mistaken with fluorescence. He directed Krishna to check scattering on several liquids including benzene. Krishna finally confirmed their observation was right and they made a breakthrough discovery. This breakthrough discovery not only added a new chapter in fundamental science but also have a great translational value. Raman Spectra 
provide valuable information about protein structure and therefore are an important tool in the discovery of drugs. Raman spectra are also very much useful in forensic science to identify various prohibited drugs. Raman spectra are also extensively used in various enzymatic reactions that has a great value in the field of biotechnology. In 1928, Dr. Krishnan moved to Dhaka University in the Department of Physics, which was headed by S.N. Bose. S.N. Bose is famous for his collaboration with Albert Einstein in developing the foundation for Bose-Einstein statistics and the theory of Bose-Einstein condensate. In Dhaka University, Krishnan studied magnetic properties of crystals in relation to their structure. He along with other eminent scientists such as Ashutosh Mukherjee, B.C. Guha and Santilal Banerjee developed a classical and precise experimental technique to measure the magnetic anisotropy of diamagnetic and paramagnetic crystals. Let us see what magnetic anisotropy is. When a magnetic isotropic object is placed in the magnetic field, then the object will not move, but an anisotropic object will move in the field. Their findings were published by the Royal Society of London in 1933. When Krishnan included Michael Faraday's work on electromagnetic induction with his work, it led to development of a new method to measure the anisotropy of the crystal. Dr. Isaac Schoenberg, the father of high-definition television from Cambridge, was so inspired by this method. Today, the methods developed by Krishnan's anisotropy research are still used in structure biology and petroleum prospecting. In 1933, Krishnan returned to Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science to take up the post of Mahindra Lal Sarkar, Professor of Physics. Here, Krishnan continued to elaborate on magnetic properties of crystals. Along with Shantilal Banerjee, their work was published in Nature journal. Their work is now known as the Krishnan Banerjee method for measuring the magnetic susceptibility of small crystals. In 1937, Ernest Rutherford, the father of nuclear physics, invited Dr. Krishnan to the Cavendish Laboratory, Cambridge. He was also invited by Sir William Lawrence Bragg in Royal Institute London to give lectures. Sir Bragg is famous for his Bragg's Law of X-ray Diffraction, which is basic for determining crystal structure. Krishnan was also a sports enthusiast and used to visit Eden Garden to watch football match. He was also fond of reading books and also inspired by various authors and his special inclination was towards Tamil literature. Despite getting lucrative job offers with high salaries, Krishnan was never mentally prepared to leave Calcutta because of his attachment with ISCS. However, at this time, Second World War started. Krishnan had to move to Allahabad University at the request of famous paleobotanist Professor Birbal Shani to fulfill the void left by Professor Meghnath Shah. After joining Allahabad University in 1942, he strengthened the existing infrastructure for postgraduate teaching and research and revised and updated the syllabus of both BSc and MSc. He also permanently started photography class with a diploma course in photography and organized a physics colloquium for advanced students for reading 
original papers and discussing special topics in physics. Having excellent teaching skill, Krishna started to draw bright young students to the physics department. Among them, many became famous, and Harish Chandra is one of them, who later became a great mathematician. After whom, Harish Chandra Research Institute, Allahabad, is named. The unavailability of proper research environment forced Krishna to work on theoretical ideas. Along with a young colleague, Abad Bihari Bhatia, Krishna started to analyze the electrical behavior of binary alloys and later of metallic liquids. This inaugural work by Krishna and Bhatia helped Zeman to propose the theory of electrical resistivity of liquid, popularly known today as Bhatia Krishna Zeman theory. During his stay at Allahabad University, he wrote a paper titled A Simple Result in Quadrature, discussing the summation of certain infinite series with special properties, which is published in Nature. Krishnan was in a very core group of scientists along with Homi Bhabha and Shanti Sharup Bhatnagar, on whose shoulders India's first Prime Minister, Jaharlal Nehru, banked upon to take India onto the path of development. In 1947, Jawaharlal Nehru requested Krishnan to assist him in Delhi as a scientific administrator. Krishnan eventually took the charge of first director of National Physical Laboratory in Delhi in 1947 after serving Allahabad University for five years. Despite getting involved in administration, Krishnan never stopped being enthusiastic about his research and identified two new research areas, lattice oscillation in ionic crystal and thermionic properties of metals and semiconductors. Krishnan set up the national standards of measurement with Indian equivalent of various measurement units, which is still meticulously maintained by NPL till date. One of the significant collaboration was with Dr. David Schoenberg, famous for his work on low temperature, helped Krishnan to set up a low temperature liquid helium plant at NPL for the study of behavior of solids at very low temperature. This field of research later helped the development of semiconductors. There is an interesting story during his early time at NPL. When he saw one of the contractors was cutting down two trees at the entrance of NPL, which he stopped and asked the reason for. He got the answer that the trees are looking asymmetrical at this landscape. So. Krishnan gave a practical solution of planting another tree to make it more symmetrical despite cutting it, which shows his aptitude as an environmentalist. In his own words, Now the main purpose of science is to understand nature in all her varied aspects and learn to control nature and to use this mastery of nature for the good of mankind. Throughout his eventful journey of science and research, K.S. Krishna is praised with various prestigious awards and honors for his contribution to science as well as society. In 1937, Krishna received Lake University Medal from the University of Lake, Belgium. And after three years of that, in 1940, he became a fellow of Royal Society London. His contribution is commended by the British Government of India by presenting knighthood to Krishnan in 1946. He was the President of 35th Indian Science Congress in 1949 
and after independence he was crowned with third highest indian civilian award padma bhushan in 1954 in 1958 he was the first recipient of prestigious hartnagar memorial award in this highest award in science apart from this major awards krishnan was also honored with the position of vice president of international union of pure and applied physics and the international council of scientific union from 1955 to 1957 he also held the position of chairman of board of research in nuclear science and indian national committee for international geophysical year from 1957 to 1958 in the year of 1958 krishna was praised with national professor award along with dr s n bosch krishna is also one of the founding members of international union of crystallography he is one of the few scientists who curved the way for the development of science and technology in india on 14 june 1961 due to sudden cardiac arrest krishnan left us leaving behind the great legacy of his work through science and research which socially impacted the development of india's future his contribution cannot be forgotten and must be dispersed among india's young generation which will inspire them to walk the path ks krishnan had walked once I hope you enjoyed the journey inspiring journey of Dr K S Krishnan Now let's take a quick tour of RCB facilities and post that we'll have a question and answer session for which you are requested to post your queries in the comments box thank you please play the video Regional Center for Biotechnology is located in a tranquil environment along the Gurugram Faridabad Expressway. It is an autonomous institute established under auspices of UNESCO by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. The primary focus of RCB is to provide world-class education, training to create high-quality human resource in biotechnology and conduct innovative research at the interface of multiple disciplines the infrastructure at rcb has developed at a rapid pace since inception of the institution in 2010 with state of the art research labs teaching labs innovative classrooms central instrumentation facilities small animal facility bio safety level 3 facility a bio repository and state of the art advanced instrumentation facilities like the advanced technology platform center and a bio incubator which serves as a reservoir for incubating ideas in the area and help them reach commercialization there are various areas of research in rcb the research group under the area titled cell biology development and behavior focus on unlocking the secrets of cells how they divide and how stem cells develop into muscle in addition to studying the cellular and molecular origins of how organisms behave areas of agricultural biotechnology aim to tackle some issues by harnessing the existing genetic diversity in plants 
and their inherent capacities to adapt to abiotic and biotic stress conditions in order to develop innovative and durable methods of crop improvement. Groups working on infectious diseases, both bacterial and viral, aim at developing novel therapeutic strategies against infectious agents. Using tools such as mass spectrometry and microscopy, these researchers will shed light on cellular and molecular basis of bacterial infection and the response of the human host towards these infections. They are trying to find novel solutions to protect the people against diseases such as chikungunya virus, Japanese encephalitis virus and dengue virus. Protein structure and design groups are structural biologists who have a molecular view of life and use cutting-edge methods like macromolecular X-ray crystallography or cryo-electron microscopy to imagine biological molecules in their functional state. This information is used to develop novel therapeutic strategies against pathogenic bacteria and viruses and for protein engineering to prepare molecules with desired properties. Researchers at RCB are also working towards developing innovative biotechnological applications such as novel drug delivery systems, new diagnostic tools, novel engineered protein with improved desired proteins and improved methods to obtain desired products in large scale. These researchers subject laboratory and clinical samples to cutting-edge microscopy proteomics and genomics methods coupled with flow cytometry to shed light on the etiology of disease and utilize this knowledge to identify solutions to these disorders. The quality of research conducted at RCB is excellent with faculty winning top honors like the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar, the National Bioscience, the Innovative Young Biotechnologist Awards and the Ramanujan, Ramalinga Swami and DBT Welcome Alliance Fellowships. Since research-based learning is the hallmark of RCB, the academic programs here are deeply enmeshed with the research programs. The academic programs fulfill RCB's core mandate to provide quality education and training in the area of life sciences and biotechnology. The PhD program in biotechnology is for students who are interested in working at the interface of multiple disciplines to find novel solutions for problems in health and agriculture. RCB has recently started integrated PhD program in biotechnology offered to students with graduate degree in any discipline of science from India and abroad. The program provides extensive learning opportunities in the broad field of life sciences and biotechnology. RCB has also recently initiated an interdisciplinary doctoral programs in the area of biostatistics and bioinformatics through collaboration with the global pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline GSK being conducted in partnership with other institutions by creating a virtual faculty pool. The focus of this program is on creating specialized manpower for the healthcare industry. As an outreach activity, RCB also offers research training programs for research-driven undergraduate and postgraduate students of science from various universities. Trainees get a realistic experience of several facets of modern biological research that sets the tone of their embarking on a research career. Throughout the year, RCB hosts and organizes regular academic events like the RCB Bioimaging School, national and international conferences, seminars, symposia and training in the frontier area of basic and applied sciences in topics such as infectious diseases, drug discovery etc. to disseminate advanced knowledge, exchange ideas, foster national and international collaborations student exchange and networking opportunities. RCB also holds scientific communication and communication workshops for the benefit of young scientists in India. RCB has a fully functional library and houses 500 scientific textbooks and 100 administrative books in multiple copies. 
In addition, an electronic library provides access to a vast range of primary literature in the form of peer-reviewed journals and reviews. RCB offers faculty residences and excellent students' facilities including on-campus air-conditioned hostel accommodation, modern library, meeting rooms, seminar rooms and auditorium. The hostel and student facilities are conveniently located and only a short walk away from the classrooms and laboratories. In addition, the campus also has sports and recreation facilities which encourages all-round development of the students. Campus also provides a childcare facility for all students and staff to help them continue their studies and work while their babies are being taken care of. Kridangan, the creche, housed in the faculty building, is an asset on campus for employees of NCR Biotech Cluster. The spacious cafeteria in the campus serves hygienic, nutritious and delicious meals and beverages at reasonable cost. RCB also contributes towards creating resource for researchers from all over India and has engaged with institutions such as the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility in France towards this end. RCB is also involved with the UNESCO towards developing policy to ensure sustainable development at the global level and specifically in the Asian region. RCB is a young institute which is growing day by day with excellent opportunities for young people to make a career in the area of biotechnology. Thank you all uh, for watching this uh, life uh, career of Dr. K. S. Krishna and her virtual tour. Now I would be happy to take the questions. I got few questions through my, my personal phone on text. Uh, the first question is, when the application for gate B or BET will be available? So gate B is graduated aptitude test for, uh, for biotechnology and BET is the biotechnology entrance test that that is you are eligible for the biotechnology, MSc biotechnology and through gate B you get a fellowship to pursue your research. So uh, this, this form are now available. I request all go to the RCV's website and you will find all the details and you can apply. The second question is, uh, what is the eligibility for MSc PhD integrated program and, is, and what is the fellowship associated? So for eligibility of MSc PhD integrated program, his uh, bachelor degree with 60% marks in any any uh, science related subject and there is a fellowship associated that is 16,000 for first two years then candidate have to qualify the other uh, fellowships from uh, CICR on BVT or ICMR and uh, the another question is uh, what is the research focus of RCV structure biology group? So uh, you must have seen in virtual tour, uh, we have a very vibrant structure biology group. Uh, we are uh, now uh, four faculties, uh, four or five faculties here. 
uh, Professor Nair works on the genomic integrity and plasticity that they and the in genome uh, how it mutates itself and maintains its integrity also. Then uh, Dr. Bangladeshian's group studies how bacteria attach to the uh, cell membrane like through cilia. There may be some good bacteria and bad bacteria to understand that mechanism. Dr. Dipti's group studies the flagella when bacteria need a flagella, how it sheds off or how it take, put more flagella to survive in different conditions. And uh, the model system, their, our lab is working on pseudomonas. Uh, my research focus is on uh, uh, protein synthesis in uh, different stress, uh, like when microbacteria encounters different stress in macrophage and what kind of translation strategy it adopts to survive. More recently, uh, our dean, Dr. R. P. Roy joined us, is also structure in structural biology group. Uh, the Dr. Roy's uh, research focus is on protein engineering. And uh, the another question is, what kind of cryo-EM facility RCV has and how to access this. So uh, the electron microscopy facility or cryo-electron microscopy facility, it is with uh, advanced technology platform that RCV has. You must have seen in virtual tour also. We have two microscopes. One is Geol 1400 that has 120 kBA uh, microscope with tungsten filament. And that is very good to analyze negatively stained particles. And another microscope, we have GR 2200 FS, uh, and it is it has a field emission gun. And uh, uh, if you pick the direct detector, uh, that is uh, get on K2 submit. This is for the to analyze the cry and sample. And uh, we have the facility to make cry and sample, uh, cryo, uh, cryo plunger CP3, and also to make the sample uh, for the tomography. We have cryo, uh, cryotome diamond knife, uh, even glass knife we are using. So essentially we have a full package and to make sample for negative staining, tomography, cryo-EM and other. And uh, to access, uh, you can write uh, the service underscore ATPC at the rate of RCV, R-E-S dot R-E-N and to get more, sem more information and know uh, how to send your sample or how to book your slots. Yeah, I think with this, uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.